With IBM Identity Management, there are multiple ways of dealing with uh, contractors versus employees. I'm going to show one way of doing that, a very simple one, by just using roles. We're going to assign a role, a contractor role, to a user that is a contractor. So we're going to actually set all that up. It's so easy to do that we can do it as part of the demo. And we're going to go as an IT manager, as an administrator, with our propeller head here, we go to the console, and we're going to take the steps. First step that we do is that we go into Manage Roles. We're going to create a role. We're going to call it Contractors. Contractor. And uh, we just enable access for this role. And we just created a role, nothing more that we need to do. Now we need to create a provisioning policy that we've done many times before. Manage provisioning policies, and we're going to create one that we're going to call access. Access for contractors. Nothing to do with all these options that we have used in some of the cases, and we're going to specify who is going to get this provisioning policy, and we're going to associate it with a role by selecting here role specify below we click add we look for the role we just created contractor now we had matched the provisioning policy to the role but now when somebody gets this role what does this give them in our case we're just going to pretend that all the contractor gets in our case is access to a service called BOLDAP so we're going to say that this is automatic so the, the the minute they get the role they get the service it's not for all service but on a specific one and we said that uh, is the BOOL app we can actually search for it in here and is the BOOL app this one over there i'm going to click ok take the default workflow and that's all we have to do when do we want this? Or when we want this immediate access for contractors. Pretty good. Now, we're going to start by showing that we have a user here. Actually, the manager can do this as well. But we have a user called Oscar Foreman. Let's see what accounts does he have as a default user. So therefore, he gets only two accounts. The iTeam account, which is this one and the directory okay and mr foreman has a manager as we can see here that his manager is eric powers okay so mr powers is going to go into his version of the console which as we see in contrast to the one we just saw is a very reduced one so what he can do is actually go into manage roles and he's going to assign Mr. Foreman as a contractor. Again, this would have come as a feed from, the, from an HR system or some contractor system, but we are just doing it here by assigning somebody as a role and then he can actually promote that guy from, from a role, remove their role, the contractor role and give him an employee role, those type of things. So uh, on the roles, we're going to look for the contractor roles, and we're going to add a user, okay? Which is going to be Oscar Foreman. We just saw that he didn't have access to the BOO LDAP. And uh, we're going to look for Mr. Foreman, and we're going to add him to that role. Say, so do you want to do that? When? End of the week? When he starts working? Well, let's say that for sake of the demo, he's going to do it right now. We can see his status of his request is successful, so that means that all that happened. What means, well, actually, let me log in back as Mr. Powers. Shouldn't have log on. And show you that he got now is E Powers. He got as a user, he got access now to that BOO, that account he didn't have before. Remember, before he only had 
the iTeam service and the white pages. Now he got the VO of that. Pretty good. That's very simple. So how do we do something that we often want to do with contractors, which is, well, after 90 days, they need to be validated that we still need them. Otherwise, they're going to be automatically uh, deprovisioned. Well, let's do that. It's actually it's very simple. You can do all that out of the box. Let's log in as an IT manager. And uh, what we're going to do is that we go to Manage Policies and we go to Recertification Policies. And we're going to create one from scratch, no coding. And we're going to call this one, uh, let's call it uh, Validate Contractors Every 90 Days. And uh, Again, we, we have granularity to work with different business units. We are not going to use that right now. We click Next, and we are actually recertifying users, not account or accesses. We, we can also do, but in this case, it's, it's the users. Uh, and is all the users? No, it's actually in a specific person. And how do you specify that person? Well, it's whoever has a specific role that we will st state in a minute. And we are not going to do anything with accounts and anything with groups, which we can also have the granularity of doing that with no coding. So it's a, well, uh, what role is the one that you want to uh, associate with this? It's actually the contractor role. Okay. And we click Next. And he said, when do you want to do this? At the end of the month? No, no, actually we want it as a, in a rolling, say, 90-day calendar. And next, he says, who's going to approve the recertification? Here's the workflow. Very, very simply to do. It's a simple workflow. So he says, it's the manager. What do you do when the manager rejects that contractor? Well, we want to remove it, actually. We want to remove that account or whatever access that we specify by that role. And uh, who do you send the email? Well, it doesn't make sense to send it to the user because it's probably going to be gone. Let's say that we send the email to the administrator. And let's say that the manager has uh, five days to do this. If he doesn't do it in five days, what's going to happen? Well, like this, the action is going to be overdue and we're actually going to reject it. So automatically it's going to be eliminated after five days. We click Next. Here we have a, a, an opportunity to uh, uh, actually, if we w want to alter the default email we could actually do that we're not going to mess with with that recertification email or the rejection email that in this case will be sent to the uh, administrator so we click finished and uh, that's all we have to do so we're not going to wait 90 days so we're going to actually run the recertification policy right now this is the one we just created. We're actually going to run it. And as a consequence of having done that, they are email sent. Actually, I can start up the mail server here. And uh, Mr. Powers should be getting an email indicating that he needs to recertify that uh, gentleman, Mr. Foreman. So we go to Eric Powers' inbox and read for his emails. And sure enough, he got a recertification required for Mr. Foreman. Very good. So he goes to his intuitive console, uh, the self-help, uh, not the console, but the, the self-help uh, UI. And he logins, same user ID and password, e Powers. Smart way and recertification approval. And let's say that he say, well, you know what? I don't want Mr. We don't need any more Mr. Foreman right now. And notice that he can actually preview the impact of his selection. In this case is actually very simple because there's only one access, access to the BO of that. But if there are very many other actions, he can see the impact of everything that he does on the recertification. He can put some comments here that will uh, show in 
in the in the reports and he can actually go ahead and say yep I'm submitting that but notice that if we go back to the console and if we look at the user that access to that role that he had who gave him access to the BOLDAP you might be guessing what's going to happen it's going to be gone because that's what we specify on the actual recertification so very simple to uh, to manage contractors out of the box no coding with uh, IBM's identity management tool